good afternoon friends no, and welcome back to this important uh, lecture series and uh, that is the uh, azadik amrit mahotsav uh, a series started by icr in uh, addition to many other activities uh, which have been taken to celebrate this important uh, event friends today we have a very uh, tall personality a well known figure uh, in the uh, not only in indian agriculture but also at the international level and uh, to uh, introduce uh, such a tall uh, personality is a very difficult task uh, given to me uh, dr rasing uh, paroda dr rs paroda which uh, we know popularly Uh, he is, uh, as you know all, uh, he has been at various uh, positions in ICR, and he has a very vast experience. And uh, the important topic uh, which uh, has been chosen uh, for today's talk, for the benefit of all of you, uh, is the role of youth for a secure and sustainable agriculture. Because we know the sustainability is the key word. We talk for the sustainable uh, development goals. We we, we talk for Uh, sustainable energy sources, anything uh, su sustainable. So we have to talk for the sustainable agriculture also, and for which we cannot have any uh, better person than uh, Dr. Paroda, with, with his uh, with his uh, vast experience and uh, with his great uh, vision uh, which he has got. Uh, friends, uh, Dr. Uh, Lasing Paroda, uh, Dr. R S Paroda, as I told you, uh, is the founding chairman of uh, TAS. And Dr. Paroda has made valuable contributions in the field of agriculture, both as a researcher and an able administrator. He con uh, his contributions in the field of plant breeding and genetic resources are globally recognized. Personally, I have seen I have worked in NDPR, and we have seen how from the scratch he brought that institute to a global level, global recognition. Dr. Paroda was born in uh, Azmir uh, during 1942. he uh, pursued his phd from uh, the most prestigious uh, university that is indian agricultural research institute and uh, the pdf uh, from the university of wales uh, he has served as i told you uh, as the director of national bureau of plant genetic resources deputy director general a very coveted post uh, of uh, crop science in uh, uh, iara in uh, icr headquarters and uh, he was the uh, regional plant production and uh, production officer in fio uh, bangkok many other positions if i start talking on those uh, key uh, posts i think uh, th th this requires another lecture for uh, introducing him uh, during the period uh, 1904 to 2001 uh, he spearheaded and modernized the national agricultural research system as a director general icr and secretary department of agriculture research and education under his dynamic leadership more than 30 new national institutes were created uh, in crops horticulture livestock natural resource management fisheries you name anything it is there and uh, sir uh, most of the directors are present there and the benefit uh, beneficiary directors uh, uh, who got the benefit of your the infrastructure the the new system under your dynamic leadership they are present today in this lecture Uh, dr paroda is the main architect of one of the world's largest and most modern national gene bank in new delhi uh, which i think uh, is uh, number 1 or number 2 in the uh, in the world uh, in, as far as the number of accessions are uh, concerned and uh, it has uh, uh, very valuable germplasm accessions uh, which have been used uh, widely in many uh, uh, varieties which have been developed by different breeders the impressive national agriculture science center we all are uh, witnessing we all are the uh, beneficiary of that beautiful campus it was built on pusa campus but uh, he was the main architect and he was the person who initiated uh, that complete uh, complex dr paroda received several national international awards you name any award it is there uh, and uh, the most prestigious being the pan bhushan we congratulate you sir uh, for such a large number of awards and uh, you truly deserve and you are really uh, the, uh, the the torch bearer for all the agriculture scientists uh, you are really uh, the role model for all uh, all the scientists for the students uh, for the faculty and uh, for all the rmps i can say 
Uh, there is a long list of uh, awards, but uh, as I told you, name any award, whether it's a Rafi Ahmed Kidway Award, whether it's an ICR Team uh, Award, Fiki Award, Asia Pacific, Sita Susan Special Award, CGIR Award, Lifetime Award by many societies, and including agriculture scientists in America, Harbhajan Singh Memorial Award, and many more, many more awards. Uh, Dr. Paroda has been conferred fellowship of most of the National Science Academies to name a few like uh, INSA, NAS, NASI. He was elected as general president of the prestigious Indian Science Congress, uh, one of the most uh, and most prestigious and most important uh, Congress, I can say, during 2000 and 2001. Uh, Dr. Paroda had also been conferred honorary DSC by 18 academic institutions and universities. Again, a, a big accomplishment. Uh, for the overall benefit of the farmers, lately Dr. Paroda served as Chairman, Farmers Commission of uh, Haryana, Chairman of uh, Working Group on Agriculture and Member of Rajasthan Planning Board. Under his uh, direction, the state agriculture policies both in Haryana and Rajasthan were approved. Uh, currently, he is Member of Strategic Impact Monitoring and Evaluation Monitoring Committee of CIR and also serving on the Board of International Fertilizer Development Center. And uh, as chairman of the task, his goal, uh, his goal uh, during the last two decades is to link science to society through policy, advocacy, and public awareness. Sir, uh, we welcome you and we thank you for accepting this invitation to deliver the talk on this very important platform, which is, which is attended uh, by vice chancellors, directors, our DDGs, and uh, many other uh, illuminaries, uh, many other uh, uh, great agricultural scientists who have uh, worked uh, in various capacities. And uh, to name a few, you can see today Professor R.B. Singh, to whom I have requested to chair this session, uh, because Dr. Uh, Mohapatra, just at three o'clock, he has been called by uh, Honorable Minister for some uh, urgent meeting. But uh, if he's free, he can uh, join. You can see Dr. Bengali Babu, Dr. Chalali, you can see many vice chancellors, to name a few, Dr. Uh, Rameshwar Singh, uh, the, the uh, Vice Chancellor of Basu uh, from Kerala Agriculture University and many other uh, Vice Chancellors you can see. And uh, this uh, platform has been shared in the past by many uh, other uh, experts uh, and uh, I've been sharing all those links to everybody. And uh, the, you can see uh, from Niti Aayog, you can see from foreign, you can see from uh, many other departments. Uh, recently uh, from DST, the secretary spoke uh, on a very important topic, the saga of science. And not only the science, we also talk on the policy, we also talk, uh, we had talks on uh, motivational yoga, COVID, and many other topics. So this, uh, this platform has been so much uh, appreciated by the persons that uh, I'm getting the request that uh, don't stop this after 15th August 2022, continue this. The frequency may not be the weekly, frequency can be monthly. So, and that is because of the blessings of persons like you. And I request uh, Professor Abhi Singh also to kindly uh, chair this session. And I hand over the floor to you, uh, Dr. Paroza, sir, please. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Rakesh Agarwal, for a very generous introduction and the opportunity to speak uh, today on an important uh, topic, which uh, is now very dear to my heart, relating to role of youth for a secure and sustainable agriculture. While we are celebrating the 75th uh, anniversary of our independence, uh, I would like to congratulate all of those who are present, especially I'm privileged to have uh, my elder brother and colleague, uh, Professor R.P. Singh, to chair this uh, lecture. Nothing would give more pleasure. And to see many good friends uh, and colleagues uh, attending and uh, being with us to, to just share some of these thoughts, which I am going to present before you. Perhaps I am, and maybe R.B. Singh and a few more, are the ones who were born before independence. 
and uh, therefore i would say we are from the generation which uh, uh, was not independent uh, india and uh, most of those who are attending today had been possibly born after independence we have come a long way when i was born my mother used to tell that after one year there was a famous bengal famine uh, more than 3 million people had died and those people uh, did not die because of any disease pandemic but because of uh, hunger because of wrong policy at that time after that we have seen that uh, we were also called begging bowl and uh, we didn't have enough food to feed our ever growing population and that was the time when i was also a student at uh, pusa institute uh, when the seeds of uh, green revolution were being sown uh, and we worked with uh, both dr barlog and swaminathan in jonti village uh, dibbling those uh, a uh, few selected seeds which had come from mexico for testing uh at this stage i would like to say that uh, nothing would uh, give me more pleasure to talk about uh, the role of youth for a secure and sustainable agriculture you would uh, possibly uh, guess it after i complete this presentation and in that uh, that i would like to bring before you the uh, context of indian agriculture uh, today in the overall economy though we are contributing only 20% but when we were declared independent we were contributing almost more than 70% uh though the other sectors have also been now playing the role but i would say agriculture is still an important sector because it sustains more than 50% of the population around it and uh, uh, we have been able to uh, demonstrate to the rest of the world that we are not only meeting our own demand but we are one of the important exporting countries in the world today we are happy to notice that even country like uh, egypt is asking for import of uh, uh, 1 million tons of wheat from india the scenario has changed we have come a long way in this uh, regard if we look at the impact of green revolution we have beaten our growth of population which uh, almost uh, was uh, to the level of you know 330 million now 1.39 billion and we have uh, uh, grown our food grains by almost uh, say six times uh we are still adding one australia to our population uh we have reduced poverty from 70 to 20% and our buffer is growing and we had even touched last year 85 million ton and export of food grains which we were importing of around 10 million and when we didn't have money to buy under popl 480 we are now able to export more than 20 million tons of food grains uh, mainly rice but now it seems we will also be exporting wheat as we go along i am reminded of the celebration uh, of our golden jubilee of uh, Uh, independence when in central hall of parliament the then president dr k r narayan had said that if we have achieved two important things after independence then one is self sufficiency in terms of food grains we are feeding our people and this has raised our head high and the second is that we have increased the life expectancy and doubled it from 32 to 64 years now today it is 68 years we have therefore come long way and both food security and life expectancy would have not been possible had there not been enough to to feed the people which are increasing still at the rate of about 
1.2 percent. At world position, largest milk producer in the world. Uh, we have also now golden revolution, or sometimes we call rainbow revolution, uh, where our horticulture production has even excelled for last more than five years, that of the food grade production. And we have had also the blue revolution, thanks to inland fishery, that our production has, uh, though from marine declined, but from inland it has increased. And today we are producing almost 13.4 million tons. Globally, when we look at, we are now ranked either number two or number one. Whether you take rice, wheat, pulses, rapeseed, groundnut, fruits, vegetables, sugarcane, milk, and in the meat also, we have all the potential because we have the largest animal population. And if efforts are made through the livestock mission as expected, we would definitely make an impact in, in the animal sector as well. So when we say green, white, blue revolutions, then why there is need for any reorientation of Indian agriculture? I think we have had any, everything. We should be proud. We, and many times it is said that we have become now complacent. And often it is also said that we have worked and we are much better in performance when there is crisis. When we had crisis, we could become self-sufficient in food grains. When we had crisis and decided to increase our uh, oil seed production through oil seed emission, we almost uh, reduced our import to nil at that time. And we recently even had crisis for pulses production and in just four years time, we could demonstrate that we can meet our pulse requirement if efforts are made in the right direction and technologies that are available are scaled to the benefit of uh, our people. So despite these revolutions, why we are talking of doubling farmer's income? If this is a major challenge. This is the government's major agenda today. And uh, because we know that uh, uh, over the uh, Green Revolution time, we definitely overexploited natural resources. And many of those uh, inputs that we have been using are becoming now much costlier than what they used to be. And in that process now, uh, the prices of fertilizer, the, 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 the prices of energy, even the fuel is all going up. Uh, and, and pesticides. Uh, so the, the problem farmer is facing is second generation problem of factor productivity decline, of also uh, poor soil health, and also uh, lowering of water table, and above all, increased incidence of pests and diseases, and uh, increase in temperature and terminal heat, uh, causing now great uh, reduction in the yields of various important food crops. So we have challenges and challenges at a global level, like that of uh, sustainable development goals, which are related to poverty, hunger, malnutrition, climate change. And uh, at the national level, we have farmer related problems, the low income and the most important problem which farmers are facing even in the Green Revolution Belt, where I was chairman of the Farmers Commission, when I talked to the progressive farmers, what do they need? They said, how can we retain and encourage youth to embrace agriculture as profession? This is our major challenge. And nobody wants to remain in agriculture. And uh, then also uh, their major requirement was that not subsidy, but we need better knowledge. And obviously, farmer related issues relate to policy support, enabling policy environment. And that's why government is coming up with various programs of uh, uh, you know, supporting farmers uh, in many ways, which all you are aware. So even ministry, uh, I would like to say, Congratulate 
the, the Honorable PM to have renamed the Ministry of Agriculture to give the focus on farmers' welfare. So it is not now Ministry of Agriculture and Cooperation, but it is Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers' Welfare. We have been all the time uh, told and uh, telling that Bharat is a Krishak Khan country, and we have never made a Krishak so now time has come to make our farmer first. And this is the important uh, uh, aspect and challenge. And this farmer can not be first unless the youth in agriculture take the challenge and embrace agriculture and provide the needed support to make agriculture more secure and sustainable. What farmer need is to overcome his risk against you know, all odds whether climate change and other weather calamities, or whether it is with regard to uh, higher cost of input. So we have to increase productivity. We have to provide farmers technology, which they reduce cost on it. And they, above all, they must now link themselves to market. So it is not only the production problem, but it is now post-production problem value addition problem and value chain becomes now much more important. For this particular purpose, even government took an initiative and constituted a committee, which I happen to chair relating to policies and action plan for a secure and sustainable agriculture. The report was given in uh, August 2019 and uh, really had looked at the various concerns of farmers and what more can be done to improve their plight. We, we, we know that farmers now need good land and healthy soils. Soils are more thirsty than hungry as Dr. Randhava used to. Uh, uh, rather, soils are more hungry than thirsty as Dr. Randhava used to sell. Adequate good quality water is required. Timely supply of key inputs to the farmers and technologies, access to the knowledge, and through ex efficient extension uh, services so that there are no dissemination losses, access to the credit at low interest rate, and linkage to national and global markets, and above all, the respect and dignity in the society to attract youth in agriculture. Let me tell you, when I uh, decided to take agriculture as my uh, subject for higher education, all my class fellows laughed at me because that time it was a craze for people to either go to medical side or to become engineer. Agriculture was possibly not even thought uh, to be a, a technical subject. And uh, uh, in retrospect, let me tell you that I have no regret for having accepted and taken this challenge. But no doubt, still we are struggling whether agriculture gets that kind of dignity in society, uh, which it, it deserves, despite of what accomplishments we have made. In that context now, the, when we look at the youth, there are obvious challenges before that. First is they need better knowledge. Uh, they don't want to experience right in the beginning the failures because of lack of knowledge. And that's why they need institutional backup. No exposure to agriculture in schools they have. Thanks to the new education policy that government has now agreed to see that agriculture will be taught as a subject in schools. We have been demanding it for long and I'm glad it has happened now. Hopefully it will be implemented soon. Because unless child knows where potato grows, whether above soil or below soil, how would he appreciate the, the subject of agriculture? Limited access to land. Mostly the farmers have 85% have small holdings below two hectares of land. Lack of financial resources. They don't know where to go and from where to get uh, resources to begin any new enterprise and difficulties in linking to market 
because middle people and the organized farm sector would not let farmers and the laws also which we had uh, which we wanted to change uh, to to see that farmers are free to sell where they want uh, so these these are the difficulties of marketing no voice and decision making in the house uh, senior people would hardly listen to the the young people and i will tell a story on this later and poor social image of agriculture which i have mentioned and in fact there exist aspiration and attainment gap due to the lack of hand holding mentorship and funding support so how can we bridge this gap of aspiration and attainment by youth in agriculture so what is the way forward when we look at youth youth is our great strength i think that globally we should be proud of it in the sense on one side no doubt we have more population but to have higher population of young people is a strength for the nation to build a future which is brighter global population we know is expected to be 9 billion by 2050 youth will be around 20% India has a comparative advantage over other countries. We have the largest uh, population of youth, even more than China, that is of 356 million, ranging between 10 to 24 years of the age group, and of these, around 200 million live in rural areas. So they are having their living either directly or indirectly around agriculture as a profession. india's population is expected to remain young longer than that of china and even indonesia which are two thickly populated countries in asia average age of the indian population is 30 years as against 40 in usa 46 in europe and 47 in japan so you can see we have all the bright future and when i said uh, we are the generation uh, prior to independence now is the generation which uh, is the second generation which has also served their purpose and, and uh, served the nation and uh, now the third generation is of youth and we are now talking of this third generation after independence which has to take all the challenge for future so agriculture is a key sector it has sustains still 55% of people and youth and agriculture are the twin pillars for achieving sustainable development goals uh, this we have uh, very clearly uh, realized and uh, realized through various conferences and seminars challenge to retain youth in agriculture first figured prominently during the global conference that was organized for agriculture research and development through global forum on agriculture research which i happen to chair which is based in fao and uh, that time dr adil beltagi was chair of gfar and i was chair of the program committee and we organized and then when this conference was held in new delhi that uh, and the prime minister that time had inaugurated it that uh, unless you uh, embrace youth in agriculture probably needed uh, security and sustainability would not be possible an international forum for young professionals for agriculture development was immediately launched by us at fao under the umbrella of gfar we call it wipar and this was the beginning of youth movement in agriculture globally the importance of youth in agriculture was further emphasized and structurally debated during the two global conferences on agriculture research and development one and two were organized in 2000 in mopelie france and 2012 in uruguay both of these i happened to organize as advisor of for the technical program and there we had brought in more than 100 to 150 youth supported by european union and other donors because they all realized that Unless probably we will not be able to accomplish what we want.
and regional workshop on youth and agriculture was also organized in Islamabad through APARI, which I happen to also serve as executive secretary in 2013, and uh, where all national leaders from the region had participated. And uh, we came out with a G-card roadmap, uh, which very clearly highlights that the role of youth in agriculture and uh, bringing them in the fold and decision-making at all levels. Uh, it is, whether it is uh, the uh, association, whether it is farmers producer organization, and whether it is cooperative. And then you see the GFR and YPART logo, both which were devised at that time. And these are the, the initiatives at global level. I'm just trying to give you a background how uh, important this initiative of youth is being considered globally now. Then at national level, we started uh, when I returned back uh, in, in 2008 and nine, APARI, ICR, and PAS jointly organized a workshop on foresight and future pathways of agriculture research through involvement of youth in India at New Delhi. Dr. Eppen was at that time the Director General. And immediately after 2013, in 2014, a program of attract, uh, attracting and retaining youth in agriculture, ARIA, was initiated, which is run by uh, the Division of Agricultural Extension. And uh, Dr. A.K. Singh is uh, providing all support. On creating and attracting youth in agriculture, then was organized again in 2018. Dr. M. S. Swaminathan and uh, me and our uh, both uh, TAS and MSS uh, decided to hold this, and uh, we realized that it is not that you can expect youth to be attracted to agriculture unless you motivate them and convince them to embrace agriculture as profession. So this conference and all these proceedings, what you see are listed on all sides here uh, were from those conferences. And then we started that it is not one time uh, dialogue. This must continue at regional level, rather in all parts of the country, rather in each state of the country. And I would say now even in each KVK of the district, that journal workshop on youth as torch bearers of business-oriented agriculture, uh, which we organized in South Asia. Dr. Praveen Rao was a key uh, figure to organize it. And journal workshop was also organized in Ludhiana for the North India. And uh, Dr. B.S. Dillon was that time the, the key person to, to have it organized and be participated. I can tell you from the uh, participation and uh, innovative ideas which uh, the youth expressed in terms of what they can do and what new innovation they can bring in uh, for agriculture and make uh, agriculture more sustainable was uh, mind boggling. We need to uh, identify such young people and provide them hand holding. Uh, make sure that there is institutional backup and also make sure that there is a, a needed credit to begin with and uh, they then become important entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs, not as job seekers, but to create jobs. So motivating and attracting youth is now a new buzzword, Maya. Maya hai to sab kuch hai. Or youth agar agriculture mein hai to sab kuch hai. This is what it is. And youth, including women, as extension agents, I would mention about it later, but the time has come when we need no discipline law, especially for those technologies, which are not uh, those kinds of miracle wheats and uh, rices, which were picked up very quickly by farmers when they saw the quantum jump in yield. When you want to talk of conserving natural resources, a uh, farmer doesn't have patience to wait for two to three years to see if a legume crop is grown instead of cereal cereal, then he will be saving on 
nitrogen use in the next subsequent crops and cropping seasons. Youth as input provider, the right input at right time on their doorstep and youth as entrepreneur who will produce biofertilizers, who will produce biopesticides, who will provide the, the knowledge on fertigation, who will talk about the uh, innovative uh, agriculture relating to secondary and especially agriculture. And farmer is not keen and youth is not keen to continue with traditional agricultural practices. They have to be provided new directions and new dimensions. And in that respect, initiatives on youth are already there. There are many of these now. A program I talked about, Arya. Uh, also, we started realizing that uh, graduates are not well exposed to uh, rural uh, environment and the problems of farmers. So when I was in the council, we started the uh, what we call is the Ravi program, which now is uh, uh, being renamed as Rural Entrepreneurship Awareness Development Yojana. Earlier it was Rural Agriculture Work Experience of six months, funded by ICR to all the graduate students in final year. Now, this kind of exposure is required. The Startup India, Ministry of Commerce is there, Stand Up India, Department of uh, Financial Sources and Services there, and uh, National Skill Development Mission is there, where agriculture is also figuring prominently. And there are also initiatives on you, Make in India, Skill India Mission, Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana, PM Yuva. So there are opportunities, but are these youth aware of these opportunities? When I wanted to know from farmers in Haryana, whether they are aware as to which of the government schemes in terms of subsidy or support, which they can get, many of them said they are not aware about those. And when I wanted to collect the information, it took us six months to collect that information and for which support, which scheme, what are the new rules because rules go on changing and uh, then to whom to contact and where is the uh, performa and on which performa to apply where at what time for farmer want to do something new or youth want to do something new we will have to see that these are provided so youth in agriculture has options Options like agriculture diversification. We are now want diversity even of rice wheat. There are in incentives and uh, there are also other uh, efforts which are going on. Secondary agriculture, specialty agriculture, farm production to post production through value chain. And so the stage is now set for consolidating the gains involving youth not by traditional farmers alone. And in that uh, context, uh, when we look at uh, the, the possible options, we will have to think globally, but make sure that we act locally. And uh, for that, I just cite this example of one young farm, not even a uh, well-trained graduate, a, a, a son of a farmer in Karnal, uh, had about five acres of barren land, which was saline, and nothing was being produced. So he talked to his parents that, can I make a pond in one acre, uh, if you allow me? And they uh, laughed at him that what he will do by digging a pond. He said, I will dig a pond and use brackish water and go in for fishery production. He started with about 2,800,000 rupees to begin with. In the first year itself, he earned about 1.62 lakhs, which gave him confidence to move forward. Then he moved to villages around and took uh, you know, all the gram panchayat ponds uh, and uh, on lease basis, cleaned them and started growing fish and started earning uh, himself, as well as earning for panchayat anywhere between 5 to 15 lakhs annually. Today, he is having only 
maybe more than uh, 200 acres of ponds around the entire country he got knowledge he went himself not agriculture graduate he went to cife cift cifa cifri even abroad and went to kvk and learned the trick of fish not only fish farming but also for fish spawn production and today he is the largest supplier of fish seed in northern india and he wanted then to link himself to the market so he started like mcdonald or kfc uh, outlets fish bite the name fish bite and he is now exporting the you know cutlets fish cutlets uh, abroad and he doesn't let any you know uh, uh, the aspect of fish wasted whether it is fish bone or whether it is uh, fish for uh, uh, the, the eating purpose or even going for the spawn production and we recognized him gave him award from haryana then from icr he got best farmer award and uh, then two years back he got padma shri award i can cite many such examples there were about 10 farmers who got padma shri uh, about 3 years back and uh, it is highly uh, uh, encouraging to see and these are all success stories there are success stories like this young man who graduated from texas came back was working in a laboratory in dharwad when i once went there and uh, met him he showed me his work on bio pesticides and also bio fertilizers and then i said what are you going to do uh, looking for a regular job in the university or would like to produce these because they are not available uh, to the farmers he said sir i think i see challenge in having entrepreneurship and therefore he started with his uh, dynamic nutrient provider uh, he is producing 22000 tons for last now in 11 years he has his own app which is uh, reaching to 5 lakh farmers uh, he has a patent in 151 country and uh, he is having his business of about 35 crores and uh, hiring more than uh, 200 people so there are successes but there are failures also if the knowledge is not right so elements of success one is that one should have knowledge from access to some institution and then continuous back stopping mentor someone even a farmer farmer to farmer professor could also be an option not that only scientist to farmer or extension worker to farmer uh market need assessment is very critical one must know what is the niche Uh, for which he should try to go ahead and uh, exploit easy credit and a strong will and perseverance unless you have will and you have uh, desire to go for hard work uh, possibly success would not be possible in that we have to see that uh, we look at uh, innovations uh, innovations which can be scaled and uh, is scaling is the only way by which we can have uh, success in future there are many options available harnessing science for new gains professor rb singh has been talking about these in most of the uh, you know conferences whether it is gm crop whether it is ict big data bioinformatics uh, genome editing use of drones robotics artificial intelligence farm mechanization uh, what we are talking of you know zero till drill happy seed drill uh, seeder improved soil health in situ conservation of organic matter uh, protecting environment through ad both adaptation and mitigation approaches and uh, overall sustainability through integrated farming system not only crops not only animals but maybe crop animal 
agroforestry, fishery, and so on. But we need now incentives for innovation. And these innovations can be scaled. Uh, I would say there are many, just a few highlighted here. Farmer is uh, starving for good knowledge and uh, good knowledge for any NRM related technology is not easy and is not baby of one individual expert. Therefore, you need to have, uh, you know, approach not to individual for extension, but approach of the individual to community. And in that respect, ICT has great scope. I will talk about it, hybrid technology. It has made wonders. It has increased our production productivity, but still area coverage on, under most of these hybrids is uh, hardly between 50 to 60%. Why can't we increase it to 90% if the uh, crop is still grown? GM crops, why we struck only with the cotton, which is not a food crop directly? Why not soya bean when we have deficiency of protein, uh, deficiency of oil, why not mustard and soya bean, and why not maize and brinjal when we have quality protein options, and also when we have options of uh, uh, producing more uh, by uh, giving farmers greater benefit. Conservation agriculture, why should we till land? They're the best examples of conservation globally in 200 million hectare area is in dry land areas. But in India, in dry land, conservation agriculture has not yet picked our attention. Protected cultivation, we started under NATP, 25 years have gone. We have covered around 50,000 hectare area. But when we will have almost half a million hectare area, when we look at China, where they have already 2 million hectare area covered. Micro irrigation, we have been able to do well. We now have around 6 million hectare, but when can we make it 10 million hectare out of 60, 66 million uh, irrigated area that we have today? Uh, Bioenergy, biofuel, government has now come out with a strategy of admixing 20% of ethanol uh, with the diesel or petrol, then uh, why can't we use sugarcane or maize, of which there are options? Uh, Brazil has taken advantage of sugarcane, and USA is now taking advantage of maize. And these two crops also are important for India, where we can raise more. And already we have more buffer stock of sugarcane, which we can not compete globally to export. Four to five million tons of sugarcane uh, we had last year, and. Uh, this year, I am told we are able to make some dent there and there will be export of sugar from India as well. Maize has all the potential, biofortified crop. Uh, when we are saying that we have a problem of hunger, then quality protein maize, iron, zinc, rich rice, iron, rich bajra, rich uh, rice, zinc rice, and so on, several of these ICT. The, one of the best success stories we had in the beginning was of uh, uh, ITC, Indian Tobacco Company, called Icho Power. And they have really demonstrated how knowledge can be transferred to improve the livelihood of farmers while also using more of the inputs in which they are interested. GM crops, success is all before us. What we need is innovation of this kind and not innovation only, but disruptive innovation, like innovation of this cell phone, which I have here. Now I can use this cell phone while sitting here and uh, start my tube well in my village, which is 400 kilometers away. And this was installed by a, a, a village artisan, not uh, a trained graduate. And uh, disruptive innovation like BT cotton, we had hardly 8 million hectare area. Now 12 million hectare, how it became? Because farmers found this more profitable than other crops. Then cotton, now we are the largest producer of cotton in the world. 
we were at one time importing and we are a major exporter now fetching about 4 billion to 5 billion us dollars per annum and we have lot of we have to bring pt cotton in india so that farmers have to reduce their cost on import and on pesticide and we were using more than 50% of pesticides in uh, cotton alone out of total pesticide use in agriculture i think they say uh, the test of pudding is in eating so we have seen this if we didn't have bt cotton probably there was no case for gm crops in india but there is policy for using this particular technology which is otherwise available for other crops and can help farmers in increasing production and reducing their cost on on costly inputs genome editing there is option now we have in in banana a, a crispr cas uh, genome edited uh, banana which is high in beta carotene uh, now the genome editing guidelines have been approved i hope they clean this material and are able to have the uh, protection for innovation by partnership with orteva and uh, um, make sure that benefits of this innovation is available to our farmers we have biofortified crops uh, they the all india coordinated program on pal millet I have come out with these hybrids uh, some of uh, also these hybrids are from ecrisat but what we need is now scaling them and uh, scaling them uh, also with the policy support for slight higher price as we get for basmati rice compared to the uh, normal rice in that respect also qpm deserves consideration because there is some yield penalty unless that yield gap uh, for qpm uh, but it it helps otherwise in increasing the you know growth of the young children or even animals for feed if it is provided so why not we have a policy to support and and come forward with these approaches well time is uh, now almost uh, coming to an end uh, i would take another 5 7 minutes there are options 15 point agenda ict paid extension service is the only way now private sector i do not know what to you know spray in my uh, crop of uh, whether it is say citrus or whether it is banana or whether it is uh, a mango if i am in arid horticulture but and which pesticide to use how much water to be used which equipment to be used and what time to be used. so why not have a custom hire service for it on contract basis like we do in village now i do not have i am a farmer now for last almost 20 years uh, i don't in fact uh, have my own uh, tractor but uh, i can hire a, a young person who will come and cultivate my land and uh, will be in a position to uh, have my crops on the next day as and when i want now in this particular aspect certified nursery for quality plants is another area quality input supply farm mechanization custom hire centers agri clinics post harvest processing value addition micro irrigation another area farm producer organizations Uh, protected cultivation, conservation agriculture, uh, accredited laboratories, inland fishery, spawn production. So all these are great options. And why not? We have accredited labs by the private entrepreneurs for providing the soil and water uh, analysis. Uh, because when we are saying we have distributed more than fourteen uh, crores of uh, uh, what we call is uh, um, soil health cards but uh, then analysis is of what kind they are having and are they using that analysis to then use specific nutrient 
and why policy is only for nitrogen uh, use and stay on nitrogen or urea. But why not if I need in my field the gypsum, then why should I uh, not have support for gypsum if I have analyzed my so incentive as per need to make uh, more uh, efficient agriculture, more uh, what you call is precision agriculture and uh, more secured agriculture. Just few examples quickly, conservation agriculture. In irrigated areas, we started with, with rice wheat consortium. Uh, when I was deputy director general, we have so far covered only 2.5. There are successes, but there are there are again challenges because you have to work with the farmer and convince them. And then obviously farmer will not be able to, small farmer, to spend on such heavy machinery uh, when the use of machinery is for a very small period. So you have to have a kind of custom higher service centers established uh, by maybe a few young entrepreneurs of different machineries and they can continue earning all the year round and not to uh, let every farm, farmer buy. But you have the, the successes like in growing wheat, you can also have and see after uh, rice, you can immediately think of having either wheat and other crops as well. Protected cultivation, I have mentioned to you, great scope and uh, from uh, the, the sky is the limit, but again, you need the proper knowledge, knowledge relating to solarization, fertigation, uh, pesticide use, and also uh, which uh, crop or which seed to be used at what time and which seedlings to be used at what time are the issues which have to be looked at. Dr. O.P. Yadav provided me this slide where a low cost construction has been now uh, uh, tried at Jodhpur and area of the polyos is 8 by 16 meters. Production in just five months was about uh, 1,500 kg. Rate, I'm putting only 100. He said 100 to 400. It can range because of the fluctuations in the market. And farmer can take three crops in a year, cucumber, tomato, capsicum, and net income to any youth from such a small area can be anywhere between five to five, four to five lakhs per annum. But this is only possible if the proper knowledge and support is there. Uh, and, and there are now opportunities. Shipping containers are the future of uh, farming in in the you know urban areas, uh, one repurposed shipping container can grow two acres worth of produce and provide all the green in the supermarkets in these big towns. And uh, then we have also potential of micro irrigation, uh, subsurface uh, drainage system. Uh, no one ever thought that rice wheat can also be grown using subsurface drip system and. Uh, uh, you can save on water, you can save on fertilizer, increase nitrogen use efficiency, and you can increase production. Why still broadcasting of fertilizers? Why not go in by using these decision support systems? And who can provide this kind of support to the farmer, probably youth? And that's where I see great opportunity. And why not? we have placement of fertilizers in the soil. Why not use even liquid nitrogen, which the developed countries are using? Why not use drones in agriculture? Uh, great options are there, but would require uh, technologies. And my own experience of arid horticulture is that you need to take care of uh, your irrigation and water requirement. So micro irrigation, when you are in arid areas, in the dry lands, uh, no other option, but you still can raise good crops and with little water. And uh, that's why I, I adopted rather than crops, the arid horticulture, whether it is beer, whether it is aula, 
whether it is uh, pomegranate, uh, guava, citrus, uh, chiku, sapota, date palm, and 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 this and paroda and fig and what not. And there is great potential. So you have to, but go in for value addition. You have to have diversification. You cannot uh, live on only one particular uh, crop or species, and you have to have sustainability. So conservation agriculture, no tilling the soil, and come out with the technologies for using biofertilizer, uh, biopesticides, also, also use of, uh, you know, rhizobium cultures and whatnot. But you need knowledge for all this. And finally, what you need is to the market. Linking to the market is the biggest challenge. We created markets for the farmers in Karnal, uh, Rotak, and also in Pachkula, and asked the farmers to come and uh, start selling their produce from uh, nearby area. And no farmer came forward. Those 100 shops were uh, built. Uh, uh, the chief minister got convinced from the idea that we put before him. And then we thought it is a great failure and talk to the farmers and farmers said, it's a great idea, but we do not know how to sell. We marketing and cold storage possibilities or regulated farmer producer organization So all these opportunities are there, but uh, would require now uh, involvement of you. And wherever young people, now we have seen the success of our, you know, uh, milk revolution through cooperative, all being sold every day, you get the price and youth is mainly involved, whether boy or the girl. So finally, there are various options for food chain, food industry, feed industry, ethanol industry, I talked about that. So we don't have to only sell the raw material and export also the raw material, which we used to do, like in case of uh, guar, guar splits or guar powder. Millets, so many recipes can be made, so many young people can be trained, and uh, all health related and COVID has uh, given uh, us uh, now a lesson that you have to depend on some and uh, take better benefit of your health and also immunity. Whether it is seed spices, you can go in for value addition. Whether it is goat milk, uh, when uh, we, we realize that uh, goat milk is uh, so good for uh, uh, you know your health improvement, especially when you are having uh, the, the problem which we had in the recent past, uh, you can use it in many ways. Added value products, even like uh, you know, uh, you, what you call is uh, aloe vera. Aloe vera is you now used in many ways and has become so popular. Prosopis juliflora, uh, otherwise of no much use for animal, but now you can have animal feed, you can have the pods, and you can uh, take great benefit of uh, this particular plant which grows abundantly in the uh, arid areas. So finally, future roadmap is that if we have to do something for youth, talking would not only help. Why not we have, and this is in our report, we have recommended to the government, a separate department of youth in agriculture. Also, why not have a national mission on youth in agriculture? All these schemes which are there, norm, enormous of schemes uh, to, to make the entrepreneurship a success in agriculture through national mission. Why not through this mission have agri-clinics and custom higher service centers created? 
why not under this mission we involve youth for uh, electronic national agriculture market e name startup stand up and uh, all other agri business enterprises or farmer producer organization and a paradigm shift from narrow focus on youth as a farmer to youth as a value chain developer unless we have that like you know it is you you you, you if somebody is Uh, sets up a factory uh, his his uh, image in the society goes up but if if you do something in agriculture and start uh, uh, improving the, the quality and uh, life cycle self self uh, uh, you know cycle of any particular product then we have to also give them similar uh, encouragement creating an enabling policy environment through incentives entrepreneurship and i have talked earlier and why not also exempt these youth if they are using the value addition in rural areas through low cost uh, technologies uh, some exemption on gst on value added products so that they are able to have good market for themselves i then see that the youth finally is going to help us in improving national economy the national economy we are talking of 5 trillion economy uh, which our prime minister has uh, set as target we are presently at around 2.6 trillion which means we have to double it agriculture is contributing about 20% and if agriculture produces 20% and support of youth goes to make agriculture more secure and sustainable we will be easily able to contribute when we are achieving 5 trillion uh, target 1 trillion from agriculture alone but when you look at japan we are almost uh, uh, you know as compared to 4.8 we are 2.6 china 12.24 ton trillion and when you look at the united states uh, it is uh, you know uh, 19.39 trillion which is 24% of the global economy 15% in china and india is only 3.25% we have to think of 10% target of india's contribution in total global economy and um, have 5 trillion economy and 1 trillion from agriculture alone so youth is the only hope for a better future good health and prosperity with this i would like to thank you for your patience hearing and giving me this opportunity to talk on a subject which is entirely a, a, a new one for me but i thought is is a key one on which we need to lay greater emphasis and embrace you in future to make a difference because the changes of future can only be met following them uh, more actively thank you very much thank you thank you sir uh, for this uh, uh, i think a, a detailed road map which you have given for the engagement of the youths and for the sustainable agriculture which is not possible without the involvement of the youths you have given a complete volume uh, of uh, the, the suggestions like uh, the the uh, 15 options and uh, the road map and the way ahead uh, the way forward many things connected with this and i don't think any topic uh, has been left uh, in your talk so thank you very much sir and uh, i see uh, few questions if you allow before i ask the chairman dr mohapatra also is uh, seeing there Uh, uh dr saha is saying sir that uh, his proposal is to include two three agenda items uh, in your this 15 uh, options uh, from animal science part like uh, clean milk production and uh, uh, some more points he is trying to say dr p bk pande is saying sir uh, we should have system like uh, uber ola and amul where uh, uber ola are the service providers for those 
who can not afford to have vehicle and likewise amul is collecting milk from those who can who, who cannot sell in the market amul is collecting milk and giving to all so for your kind comments please well i think uh, uh, already there is success in terms of uh, uh, you know dairy sector uh, involving youth and uh, that's how uh, we should learn from uh, one is the cooperative spirit uh, forming self help group or uh, farmer producer organization and uh, the, the best part of uh, success of any cooperative movement and dairy which has been analyzed is that uh, you have to have uh, self respect for each other and uh, honesty is the key for success and uh, shareholding of each one there is no you know one who is a, a superior or other is inferior so if these things come in for any sector whether you it is a meat sector or whether it is even you know uh, live animal sector uh, australia has shifted from meat export entirely now to live animal export india has 500 million uh, livestock uh, at least you know small animals uh, roughly around 200 million uh, sheep and goat and uh, we also have great potential from buffalo meat uh, we we could really make great dent uh, provided there is an effort and uh, again by bringing youth in uh, in picture to to do something uh, we had organized you know life uh, life sector melas in karnal dr ak shrivastava and also from the haryana government side and we found that uh, there are animals uh, you know bulls uh, for semen production and uh, the, the cost of one bull even if you pay them 50 lakhs they will not sell you even 1 crore for one bull has been also cited at one time and uh, the best buffalo uh, of murra has been sold at 30 lakhs so there are there are examples and one farmer is there in uh, jean uh, again i didn't cite the example he has got 2000 murra buffalo and each murra buffalo is costing more than 5 lakhs of rupees and every data of each buffalo is documented electronically and he is not also agriculture graduate but he is a son of a farmer and he has linked himself to the market uh, through his own dairy what he calls is lakshya dairy and lakshya dairy is beating even the government dairy and farmers buy for any consumer buy the milk from lakshya dairy not from the vita or from other government sector dairies so there are options and livestock has great potential but in livestock where is where is the extension system where is involvement again of youth which can be even for you know uh, para vet services you can make all the difference uh if you have trained a person and now we want sex semen sex semen is available coming from abroad uh it can be of great help in case of cattle in particular and uh, uh, sky is the limit uh, inception rate increases substantially but uh, then you need to involve and you need to encourage and you need to make sure that uh, such kind of Uh, you know what i mentioned agri clinics are established where you have experts of this kind youth trained available in each district and kvks could be an option in that respect thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir for your uh, kind comments and reply to the uh, some of the queries uh, may I request uh, professor rb singh sir who is the chairman of this session to give his uh, valuable remarks Oh, thank you so much uh, dr agarwal 
uh, as a matter of fact, our most honored world renowned speaker today, Dr. Aris Paroga, Dr. Agrawal, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. As a matter of fact, uh, I was told only 10 minutes before the lecture that probably I may have to do this. Uh, uh, I'm an honor to myself in the sense that Agrawal Sahab told me that if you can kindly uh, <laughs> chair the session. But chairing the session has a responsibility of uh, which I have been asked to do now. That is, if I can summarize and bring out some of the things uh, which have been so beautifully. It's a very profound and a highly topical lecture that we have heard today. Uh, we, he, he said you deserve a standing ovation from all of us, and we are very grateful to you for your very comprehensive coverage, which, which is expected only from a person of your stature and experience. As a matter of fact, you did highlight, which I think we have to be always very cautious and careful about, that India will, within a couple of years, probably will be taking over China. And by the year 2050 or so, or by the year when the population is stabilized, India will be 400 million people more extra over China, as a matter of fact. And out of these people that we have, the largest concentration of the youth of the world will continue to be in India. Therefore, agriculture and youth being the most important, invaluable treasure of India have to be seen together and if the two get together, I think India will be the new India, which our prime minister has been aspiring for. So I feel that this is what we were able to bring, how to marry uh, the two uh, aspects, the aspirational aspects, which has to be really brought into adaptation uh, of our system. And that, that is a very strong message. We could also get a message that we have to care for in this part of the world or for the world as a whole, the persons. And in the persons, the youth is the foremost today for India. You also talked about many of the problems which were created because of the uh, Green Revolution or the uh, not appropriate way of doing the agriculture or other things, including the water use, uh, inefficiency, and so on and so forth. So the planet is stress, the people's stress, the person's stress, the planet is stress, and the, you also brought the prosperity aspects. Uh, how income of the poorest of the poor, and how India only accounting for 3% of the economy, while America is 40% of the, through that process, as we can see, of contributing to the agricultural system. So uh, as a matter of fact, you did bring about the person, people, prosperity, and planet uh, health together, which is again a very strong basis. All have to be seen together. Your priority areas that you define, I don't have to again mention. Uh, there is no room for today, poverty and hunger to coexist. The first two, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, India is still far behind in meeting these two goals. We have to make special efforts and our youth is challenged as a matter of fact, through the possible, possible policy support to meet first and foremost is the Sustainable Development Goal one and two. One, poverty, two, hunger. Hunger, and then you did mention about how to get over hunger in many ways and so on and so forth. And also the farmer first, the production plus plus, productivity enhancements, nutrition, fortification. And you did talk, talk about how the best of the science is helping today in fortification and in many different ways, the genomics and so on could be of great help. You mentioned about how the biotechnology at length in cotton was able to help in a very big way. Such examples should be a reality with the genome editing now being a distinct possibility and being elaborated more comprehensively to be applied at the ground level. I think it is this which opens a new hope, as a matter of fact, for India to raise the economy to not only 5 trillion, but try to reach beyond that 
because India has the total potential, our productivity and the rate of growth of total factor productivity is one of the lowest, as a matter of fact, among the major countries. And we have tremendous scope for in innovation, investment, science, technology, and so on to explore the new ways of doing business. And the challenges will be again uh, before our youth. The, this is where the aspirational gap has to be fulfilled for the uh, youth. And if you can do that, uh, India uh, will be able to meet the, both the pillars of agriculture and youth will hold India in the most shining position. I would also like that our educational policy, new education policy, which has been mentioned, should be able to give the academic contextuality taking agriculture to primary school, to junior high school, and connecting right from the childhood up to now, up to the age and so on and so forth. I think this is a new thing, which the academy and many other groups have come up with the new policy for agriculture. So the contextuality and the credibility of academic change should be brought about to promote what we have been saying the new way of doing the skill development, connecting them and the youth, the RAVE, and also the student ready programs. RAVE and student ready programs are most vital today and should be able to uh, go ahead, uh, get the highest uh, support from the government of India. You also mentioned about Yapar, uh, Jifar, and Arya, Maya, I don't have to go into detail. These are all possible. These are all wonderful programs. But when it comes to all these programs, the question is that we should be able to define each of these programs in action mode, in policy mode, in target mode. By so and so year, by six months, one year, two years, I will move from here to here. My number of hungry and poor will decrease by this much. We must follow it. Governance is so very important. So the implementation pathway analysis, identifying, identifying the elements of success, and then scaling up. Because we have mentioned many of the successful programs, scaling up becomes so very important. We have Sultan Singh like people who, who change the whole uh, you know, fisheries economy in the north. And if that is, if you can clone people like Sultan Singh, I, I mean to say, we have to make many more youth like him, uh, uh, not virtually, not, uh, not really cloning, but I mean, uh, you know what I mean, that we have to have many, many Sultan Singhs. And this is where I'm so glad, I'm very happy to tell, as, in, as a member of the National Commission on Farmers, I recall, we had made a recommendation that our farmers should be also be given Padma Award. And I'm so glad that this is happening today. We had also made a recommendation that the name of the ministry should be changed. Farmer welfare should be brought into there. I'm so glad this has been done. But my dear friends, only there is, if there is something in the name, that name has to be really realized through the diversification, taking up the, the making the vo local more vocal. We have to become vocal for local because there is not much independence between global and local. They are too much in that interdependent. COVID has told us that there is so huge global interdependence so that the stress our mightiness to improve. So if this is happening, we have to see that how we can incentivize new of the innovation which can bring the disruptive changes in business unusual in business unusual. And for that, sir, you mentioned about 15 points. I don't want to repeat. I just want to mention two of those, which will mean that there is a need for marrying the science social responsibility with corporate social responsibility to really ensure quality, quality input supply, market format linkage, and all those things to be linked so the value chain approach and the linking together for youth, youth with the new ideas of innovations, precision agriculture, artificial intelligence, digitalization, and you, you name of it, drones, 
you name it, mechanization of the highest order, protected agriculture, the pr profound scope of all those things, so it has to be brought about by saving, we can grow. We must not allow the kind of uh, post-harvest losses we occur. We must save to grow. And in, with this kind of approach, if you are able to have the uh, a, a appropriate value chain uh, way of moving forward, then we can marry the science of discovery with science of delivery. We discover one thing, but unless it is delivered, whom it is discovered for, with the appropriate way of really realizing it, we are nowhere. And this, there is a huge gap, and this huge youth population must be energized, incentivized to bridge this delivery and discovery gap. And this is where we often talk about extension and so on and so forth. So uh, in a country like India, a very differentiated approach. The Himalayas are different from the ocean in the south. And each one of the coasts is different from the plains in the north. Punjab is different from Kerala. All those socioeconomic spatial diversifications, diversities, and responsibilities have to be kept in mind. So this is why I say a differentiated, disaggregated approach based on the specificity and capacity of individual locations, we have to move forward. The youth has to realize. Youth belongs to it. The whole system is for the youth. And I think with that consideration, uh, the approach of the, uh, the One Health, One World, which we are rebuilding after the uh, COVID devastation, we, teaches us many ways to move forward. And I'm sure our, the, the, the future roadmap which you mentioned about, I will certainly uh, vouch for one very strong, a national mission on youth uh, seems to be so very important uh, that we must be able to create this, that will enrich our value chain, that will encourage our youth to really get entrepreneurial. Uh, entrepreneurial youth is the treasure of the nation today and for bridging the gaps that we are talking, the bridging the global gaps that we are talking. My dear friends, let me say, with my regards to Dr. Paroda, that youth is our hope. Youth is our hope. Youth is our future. Youth will marry the agriculture with the best of the, the approaches that will help to develop India as a new India. I wish you all a wonderful evening. I thank you for the opportunity, Agrawal sir, uh, to, to, to be here you, and to really say a few words. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your nicely summarizing and giving your valuable remarks. And uh, I really cherish uh, this uh, platform and uh, cherish the talks given by uh, different speakers. And uh, the chairman like you, Professor Arvi Singh, sir, who is always uh, giving the value addition. Because it's a time for the value addition. <laughs> and, uh, and unless we have the value addition, uh, the, the agriculture cannot grow. And uh, thank you very much, sir, uh, uh, for, for this wonderful talk and uh, the, the plenty of points which you have given, uh, which we, are, we have noted down. And we are going to bring uh, a document uh, of the 75 lectures uh, before 15th August. And uh, that will be released where we are making the salient recommendations from each lecture. And uh, you have given a lot of points, so uh, we'll see that how best we can accommodate uh, those uh, points. And thanks to all the audience uh, who is always uh, very eager to listen and uh, very receptive. Uh, and they, uh, as you know, they are all uh, very eminent persons, so the vice chancellors, the directors, our old colleagues, uh, like you can see, Professor Bengali Babu. Uh, you, you can see uh, uh, Dr. Yadav, many persons uh, in the audience. Uh, and to general public, sir, we uh, give access to the live streaming and we give access uh, on another customized platform uh, like the students. So there are a lot of persons and even after your lecture is uh, uh, put up on this ICR website, there are a lot of persons, more than thousand uh, and thousand persons who see later on. So this lecture is going to be very useful uh, for the students also. So thank you once again, sir. And uh, thanks to Professor R.B. Singh, sir. And thanks to each one of you for attending this lecture.
थैंक यू सर नमस्कार